coming up, we're heading to Universal to get a little bit of num nums, and then we're going to answer a couple questions, and that's about it. From the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida, this is the Universal Edition of the Diz Unplugged. This is episode 219 of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. The Dis Unplugged Universal Edition is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect universal vacation. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. The Dis Unplugged Universal Edition is also brought to you by Disboards.com. If you're looking for even more information to help you plan your universal Orlando vacation, head over to Disboards.com and join the discussion today. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Dis Unplugged Universal Edition. I am your host, Craig Williams. Today, I'm joined alongside by my co-host, Ryan the Rhino Clavin. Hello. Hello. Thanks for being here today. Yes, thank uh, you. We've got a fun episode for you. Like I said, uh, we're going to head to Universal and do another dining review. It's it's what you've been asking for. More in park content. I did get a question uh, by someone, I think it was during the latest Walt Disney World Edition podcast, they were asking, why can't we give more uh, content right up to date about the attractions and show those on videos right from the park? And I said the answer that is the honest to God's truth with it, it's because you're not allowed to pretty much film on like 99% of the things at Universal Orlando. So... Uh, and even then, the things that you kind of can film, sometimes it's like it's that that question. Like technically, high in the side, high in the sky, Seuss trolley train ride. They tell you you can't film on it, and then as you're walking through Seuss Landing, you see 900 cell phones out yeah. taking pictures of everything. But so then we have to face that line of: Do we follow the rules as they're said, or do we follow the rules that that the world makes up? And because we obviously have a relationship with Universal, we have to follow the rules that that they put in line, and not uh, not not what the average population does. So that's why we don't bring those. But we can do food all the time, and that's why we do that every now and then. We do a little bit with uh, with merchandise, but it's been a while on that. So maybe we'll have to get back into that game a little bit too. A little merchandise in the parks, mm. but we're going to do food. And uh, we haven't figured out where we're going to eat yet, so I'm not going to beat around the bush here and tell you that I know 100% what we're doing. But I can tell you that we are going to Universal. We're going to have some nom noms, and we're going to talk about it on the show. And like I said, right after that, we're going to uh, – uh, we're gonna we're gonna get into a little bit of uh, the questions that you had for us based on last week. There's only one thing I want to clear up beforehand, um, and we got a lot of questions about it. Uh, whether I, I got a couple at least, I don't want to say a lot. I got a couple. That's a lot in our world. Rhino, explain what an absatch is. Oh, it is uh, what the what some people may call a fanny pack, mm-hmm. um, but. In, uh, I believe, in the United Kingdom, that is a uh, not a good word yes. to use. Uh, fanny, it, in particular. Yes. Not fanny pack, but yeah. fanny. So, um, they don't call it that there. Um, I said it in one of my first episodes, and then I was like, well, I don't know what else to call it. And we decided that ab satch, that it was a satchel that attached to your abdomen, so we would call it an ab satch. There was a hashtag... <laughs> If you want to search the hashtag Absatch, it went around for a little while. Do some digging there. Exactly. You know, that was a good time. Uh, back in, that was that was one of those moments where I I I want to pretend that JL and I both looked at each other like, what? I called it Debbie. Its name is Deborah <laughs> from the Deborah. Yeah, Deborah. There was a lot of, a lot of good times in the past. That Debbie's was still with me. I still have her. That was that was one of our best ones. And you know, it's a that was one of our amazing inside jokes. Uh, you know, we. Couple couple weeks back, um, maybe a month back, we brought back uh, Hala Hala Pacino. Oh, the Hala Pacino brand. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Crinos yeah. haven't been around for a while. Yeah, either. no, we're we're about due for a good Crino episode. I have my T-shirt, so I know. So do I. <laughs> it's one of those ones where, uh, which it was one of your friends who made that. Yeah, right? it was my yeah. friend Anthony. Yeah, yeah, and it's one of those ones where I've left in my closet. Like I know I can't throw this away. <laughs> no, I literally was going through my closet and I was like, oh my god, this is that shirt, and I. Yeah. I was like, oh, 
I, I'm not going to. It's so soft. I don't want to get rid of it. Yeah, it's, it was made from an old Navy shirt. And yeah. it is it is very comfortable. Uh, also, I want to bring up thank you to everyone for helping uh, us to understand along the way about the whole audio animatronics versus animatronics thing. But I, I just want to say with that, if you're confused, last week we had some questions about the Hagrid figure that Universal was saying was a uh, lifelike animated figure. And I wanted to call it an animatronic. And then I posed the question, is animatronic something that Disney holds or is that only when it's audio animatronic? I believe in that episode we came to the conclusion that according to Wikipedia, which is made up by anyone that wants to, uh, as long as they source at least once or twice. But the thing, the part we came up with is that if it's audio animatronic, that means it's Disney exclusively. That is what they made. Animatronic is anything else. So if you're going to Chuck E. Cheese and you're watching their animatronics, those can be animatronics. The rock of fire explosion or whatever it's called, it's like Chuck E. Cheese with that too. I don't. It's I've been spent a lot of time at Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah. No, no. Uh, but anything else is animatronic, and we did we we understood that that episode, but I guess it didn't really come through on that. So uh, I'm still calling it a Hagrid animatronic. As long as I don't say audio in front of it, it's fine. So. That's, that's yeah, what, people did not listen to the rest of the show when I found the answer. Hell, I'll be honest. Sometimes I don't listen to the rest of the show. I that's might okay. not have either, but uh, maybe you didn't either. So, uh, regardless, you know, we're gonna with in this situation, we're gonna move on from it. We're gonna strap on our ab satches and we're gonna head to Universal for a dining review. Here we are at Universal Orlando, just like we we promised you, and we are hanging out in City Walk today. Currently, right out front of Hot Dog Hall of Fame, mm-hmm. because that's where we're eating. Mm. Yeah, we haven't formally done a review of this for the show. You did a video uh, well, years way, ago, like when yeah. we first started doing those videos. Like. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna check it out, see if it still holds up. Don't think I'm gonna do the two foot long today. Not feeling good about myself, so that's just gonna make me feel worse. But hopefully, we'll be able to find something we like and. Hopefully it'll be good. So, let's go. I went with the uh, veggie, uh, it's called the Veggie Dog Platter, I believe. It's um, $6.99 or with a side $8.99, and you can choose fries or coleslaw. I went with coleslaw, um, which is probably just as bad for you as french fries, let's be honest with ourselves. But you get the choice of two toppings with that. I went with uh, grilled peppers and onions and sauerkraut, and then I put a little bit of this spicy garlic mustard on top of it. And uh, I'm excited. I've never had a... uh, uh, vegetable based hot dog before I've had a bratwurst and, and stuff but I don't think I've had a straight up hot dog this is a morning star hot dog I'm going I'm going in mm. that's the thumbnail I don't think I like this. Um, the toppings are good, you know, sauerkraut, love me some sauerkraut, grilled peppers and onions, great. I don't like the hot dog. It's got this weird flavor to it. Like, I've had the ve- the, the vegan or vegetarian bratwurst and um, sausage I've had before have both had that, like, same kind of similar texture to a sausage. This does not have the texture of a hot dog. You don't have that casing flavor, you don't have any of that, and I get that it's like a plant-based, but I don't think I'm in love with this. I'm gonna give it a couple more bites and see, but let me uh, try the coleslaw. Well, I gotcha. Mmm. That's a lot of mayonnaise. Not mayonnaise, Miracle Whip, maybe, because it's very tangy. Mmm. I'm gonna let you talk about your food for a minute. I decided to go with the Washington dog and to talk about what's on it, I will start. It was very perdaply of me there. So it's a Hebrew national dog topped with buffalo sauce, coleslaw, so double coleslaw for me today because I also got coleslaw as my side instead of french fries, you know, like Rhino trying to eat healthy, get as many mayonnaise-based stuff into my life. Uh, Also blue cheese dressing on this and celery salt. So all piled high on there. It's 
It's, I mean, it's literally the size of a hot dog. Yeah. But for some reason, I think maybe it's like looking at the two foot long hot dog in the window, yeah. like psyching yourself up. You expect these things to come out bigger. And then it's like, oh. Standard issue. Well, <laughs> what else am I going to eat after this? Uh, that's just me though, I'm a fatty. But let's see how it tastes. Hopefully better than Rhino's, because he did not sound happy. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Hebrew National Dog is awesome. It's everything you want a hot dog to be. Classic. I'm... So I got excited about the Blue G's dressing. You gotta keep wiping your little mustache. Thing. Oh, it's still more? Yeah, it's still more. I'm not, you're still not going to the side of your face, it's on. It's on the other... Okay, there we go. There we go. Now we go. <laughs> okay. I'm not wild about the blue cheese dressing on there. I like the blue cheese. It's a nice stinky blue cheese. Mm. But with the, uh, I don't, maybe actually, you know what? I could be talking about this, thinking that it's the blue cheese when all along it's the coleslaw. But see, I was thinking maybe the blue cheese was the base of the coleslaw, but so it's like very creamy hot dog you got here. Okay. It's the blue cheese dressing. Nope, nope, it's a coleslaw. That coleslaw is very confusing. You don't get the sugar kick from it until the very end, and then it comes. And it leaves like the worst aftertaste mm. ever. Um, take one more bite, just to make sure I'm not crazy. I'm really regretting not getting french fries right now. Mm -hmm. Bring the bells up. Uh, no, that coleslaw is awful. It's really, really bad. So, I need to finish my dog to kind of get a better grasp on it, but I'm not wild about it right now, and I was hoping I would be because I love buffalo sauce. I love blue cheese. So it's not a promising, but we'll see if I kind of turn around and enjoy it a little bit more here once I finish it, but we'll fill you back in. Yeah, final thoughts for me, disappointed, but I don't necessarily put that on the quality of the food for what I had. Uh, just the coleslaw, it ruined everything. That was really bad. Uh, when I had bites that were only blue cheese and hot dog, buffalo sauce and the celery salt, it was awesome. But then the coleslaw came in and ruined everything. So I will never order anything here again based around coleslaw. But, uh, you know, I will definitely get a hot dog here again in the future. I'm just going to choose probably one that's better suited uh, for my taste now that I know what to expect. Yeah. It's the hard part when you, make, uh, when you make choices outside of the normal thing that you get. And that's what happened to me, too. Like, that hot dog is probably the worst vegetarian option thing I've ever had, though, at anywhere. Um, so I can't recommend it. It was definitely the hot dog, though, because everything else was fine. So the actual, I did not care for the Morningstar thing. It was a texture and a taste thing. Not a huge fan, but that's not gonna deter me from trying other vegetarian hot dogs in other places. Completely agree on the coleslaw. Skip that, just get the fries. It's a hot dog. Get some hot dog and french fries. Yeah. Or nothing, just get the hot dog. You maybe, know, you know, maybe just get a plain hot dog and try some of the fun mustards they have. Mm -hmm. That might be better because they have the five fun mustards. The, the whole, like, I love the atmosphere of the place. It's fun. Yeah, it's... I like that they have, like, the, the benches where you're, like, sitting watching a game in the outfield. Because if yeah. you look down on the ground, there's a, you're, like, standing on a field on the ground. Exactly. They have the field on the ground. You can sit in some of the seats from ballparks. They got Fenway seats on there for you. Mm -hmm. That's all I got. But, yeah, no, it's really fun. So, uh, it's just bad time around this time. But maybe next time will be better. So, uh, that's going to do it for right now. We're going to head back to the studio, answer some questions. That, that's right. Back to you guys. And we're back. And that was a surprise. Oh, it sure was. It always is. Mm -hmm. And that's another one of those inside jokes is that we do this way too often where we record the uh, intro, outro before we actually go out and do it. So we have no idea what's going on, but we hope for the best. Sometimes it actually falls in line where it all ends seamlessly. Other times it doesn't. This one, I feel like it's one. It feels good. 
This feels good. I feel good. About feels this. right. Feels right. So we're going to end the show like we have been the past couple of weeks by answering a couple of questions, whether they were asked on uh, Twitter, YouTube, whatever. Uh, again, just to keep reiterating every week until we get enough questions where we feel comfortable with it. Always leave your questions in the comments below on YouTube on the video for this episode. If you're listening to this uh, on whether it's iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google, however you're getting it, you can always tweet at us at Telecluster, at Diz Universal, at RYNO1185, which means Rhino1185. Uh, you can, any of those ways where you can head over to YouTube, find that episode, and then leave a comment on it. We're making it very accessible for you to ask us questions. And then always at uopodcast.disunplugged.com, just leave us a question so we can answer it on this episode. We have uh, two great questions for this one. Uh, the first one is kind of an extension of the Absatch conversation. Comes from Broadway X Babe and says Broadway, yeah, Broadway X Babe. Uh, you guys don't use backpacks. What do you do for hydration? Do you just carry around your water bottle around with you? I don't love backpacks, but I also need to keep my reusable water bottle with uh, me. I said I carry a backpack at all times in my life. Oh, sorry. I meant you guys who don't use backpacks. Oh, oh, it was a okay. general question. Sorry. One word really changes that question a lot. Here's what you do. You get yourself a little carabiner clip. You clip it on your belt loop. You're a stepdad. <laughs> okay. There you go. That is one answer to it. Um, okay. So for hydration, what do I do when I don't have a backpack? Uh, simple enough. I have to just abuse the fact that Universal is going to give me way too many of those tiny, tiny, tiny water cups that are 100% ice and I guess 100, uh, it will say 99.9% .9 ice and then 0.01% water. Got 99 water. ice cubes oh, yeah, and water yeah. ain't one of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, water is made out oh, of ice. Yeah, yeah that was good. That was good. Uh, but okay, yeah, so Universal does have the problem that they're, uh, they <laughs> They give you these little tiny refill cups uh, to to fill up, and it's not not sorry. They don't give you refill cups. They give you cups of water when you ask. They're way too small. They're way too filled with ice. It's like you need ten of them in order to feel rehydrated, especially on those hot days. It would be great if you could just carry around your water bottle all around and refill. Obviously, uh, you know there's been changes to their system with Coke Freestyle and stuff along the way that has made uh, things harder, but. Um, um, it's, you, you know, usually it's, it's one of those things where if I don't have a backpack with me, that's, that's all I do. I just go up and I ask for my free cup of water. It's not ideal, but, uh, you know, it, it's, it's water fountains too, you know? Yeah. And, uh, but and they're I don't like gross sometimes. I know. Yeah. It's, it's not necessarily the water that's coming out of them. I'm not one of those people who's like, Oh, Florida water. That's awful. I think there's nothing worse than water that's come out of a tap that's not properly cleaned that is from like lemonade or powerade and it's got that weird yeah like big sugar yeah. aftertaste i think that's worse than the stuff that comes out of a florida tap uh that's just me personally so it, it's i drink tap water at my house yeah, I mean, I, it's I drink. probably better filtered at the theme park than it is at my house. Yeah, sometimes I, 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 feel like. I think that is a lot of the case with it. But honestly, yeah, that's where you know, it it's not perfect out of a water fountain. It's okay for me. It's the ice. I need my I need my water nice and cold. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times the water fountain won't cut it. Uh, maybe get the cup with your ice at the the drink stand and then from there take it and refill it a water fountain but that's simply all i do you know they're going to take care of you they're going to make sure that you know go high the uh, dehydrated and get really sick and not feeling well so just just do do that uh but you know obviously if you if you can bring a water reusable water bottle that's the ideal um it's just uh, it, they, i'm telling you just get the kind of clip on you i know it's lame but they yeah. sell them like the, the the type that you see like disney cast members universal team members yeah. they have them clipped on them but I, you can buy those pretty regularly regular in, whatever in many places they also sell, don't they sell those like things that clip on the top of a water bottle now too? I yeah. I want to say Universal. I saw them in the gift shop before. Yeah. It's ultimately though, I think the main problem with reusable water bottles in Orlando is not enough places has, have oh, adopted nowhere. onto yeah. them. Um, and I will say that other places we've traveled, even California, it feels like 
every now and then I struggle. There was to... one in downtown Orlando the other day, though. I saw it. It was by Lake Eola. They have the thing where you can put the water bottle yep. straight ahead into it. And I, I like, feel oh. like it's a sad state when the gym at my my uh, association, my my home where I live, I feel like when my gym even has a reusable water bottle fill station over like a theme park, that's when Here's things the thing. are dire. If they want... Uh, I hate saying that. If they want us to get rid of single use items which is a big thing that i'm all about you know like get don't waste that paper cup don't whatever you know but how can you do that if you can't if you're not we need to provide the tools to get rid of that stuff to begin first before we get rid of it it's like we're doing it backwards the world will adopt saving the environment but you have to make it easy on us too i feel like i if i knew the words to like the make that change Get on your feet. Is that, Parks and Recreation is the theme today. <laughs> get up and make it happen. Ron, no, Gloria, there's not enough rug to get to. Not the even that. The it's Gloria Estefan is I the know. theme of the day. Okay, uh, moving on to our next question. It comes from, actually, this is a Twitter one. It's a rare one. So uh, Bry Dawes, uh, Brian, was actually updating us as he was getting ready to start running the running Universal Minions oh, 5K. the one in Hollywood. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they had their inaugural 5K race uh, just recently this weekend, and it looked like a great time. Yeah. I am actually very jealous. I would have loved to have done it. I didn't realize the course was so awesome. I don't know if they like showed off what the course would be like before they uh, they sold the race or anything. And uh, but it was like legitimately, you start off in the park and you run the entire park, and then you run down in the back lot. It's not like yeah, there yeah. was no parking lot running like at a run Disney race. No, it was, yeah, you were like in the set. You were like on the War of the World yeah. set and stuff. It was yeah. cool. Like legit, they ran through Amity. And they oh, ran yeah, past that was Jaws. the part. Yeah, well, yeah, no, you it, don't even get there on Halloween Horror Nights. You can't even go down there. Yeah, the, no, to that part of it. it. It was insane. Looking at the the track, looking at all the people who were out there running it, it looked like a amazing time. I am so jealous. Running by be. Angela Lansbury's yeah. house down it's, there. It's, it's, I remember when they sent me the announcement about this race, and I was like, oh, it's, it seems fun, but no way I'd ever go out there for a five k. And now, like looking back on it, like I'm, I'm kind of jealous mm. that I didn't, I didn't actually go ahead. Well, and, now they know. The next time they have one, well, they already have the next one. I believe it's November 16th, and it will be a Jurassic Park. <gasps> but oh. the caveat right now is the only people who can sign up for it are ones who ran the inaugural oh. minions. So it could open up, but right now it's only for that. But they're not calling this. Uh, running Universal Studios Hollywood, they're coming. They're calling this Running Universal, which so makes you think we'll get one here. Well, that's that's part of it. We've had um, the first year, I believe, Universal did a 5K in Orlando. It was only employees, and then after that, they've now opened it up to annual pass holders. You but could, it's become a big event, and it's could run City Walk, and then each one of the parks, and that's yeah. what it is. I wanted to do it this past year, and Kylie and I actually it sold out before we could sign up for oh. it. Um, so it's become a popular thing, but not on like the level that it's still a small event, but it could become a bigger one. So, uh, Brian ran the race, sent us a couple pictures from it. It looked like an awesome time. So thank you for that. But he also said, um, with the announcement of the Jurassic park is the next running universal event. What do you want to see as a future theme for either coast? Harry so- Potter. Yeah, no, that's okay. Let's live in the real world where J.K. Rowling is not willing to uh, sell herself for a running event. Mm -hmm. What She likes people to be healthy. Yeah, but I think she would have endorsed some of the running Harry Potter running clubs that are already out there if that was the case. What about? Well, they can't do a Marvel one, right? No, no, they cannot do a Marvel one. So what do we want to see? A Dr. Seuss one? There's not much oh. left in that park, but a Dr. Seuss one could have a fun medal. Um, yeah, that, that could. Um, how about a Steven Spielberg-themed one? That's immediately what I was thinking. I would love to see, um, to start going off that. Obviously, Jurassic Park was a big one. I would love to see, uh, especially out in Hollywood, they're already running through Amity. 
I want to see a Jaws one. Yeah. Uh, bring a Kong Kong, a uh, King Kong one, a Kong Kong. A Kong Kong. <laughs> a both coast Kong Kong. I was thinking you were just like you wanted the dog Kong to, <laughs> to yeah. be it. Like, that was it. Uh, you get one free Kong yeah. if you run the race. No, no but a King Kong uh, race. That would be awesome. That could appeal to both coasts on that, obviously. Uh, it would have to take some work. I don't know how it would go into it, but. Come on now. You're missing. We're missing an obvious one right Which here. one? The Back Tonight the Show with Jimmy Fallon. Oh. No. Um, uh, I was going to say Fast and the Furious because you have yeah. to be fast and furious oh, uh, to get through the race. I agree with that. Fast and Furious, I do think they could technically make it work out of Jimmy Fallon as well, too. Um, I a Back I, to the Future one would be amazing. Yeah. Back to the Future, obviously. Um, any, like you said, with E.T., anything Steven Spielberg that he made while he was working in a partnership with Universal on that, I would... If if Universal has the exclusive theme park rights to use anything Simpsons in theme parks, I would love to see that. But who knows? They probably never opened it up to saying, oh, like a, a race. If we want to use a race one day with the Simpsons, we can do that. Around Halloween, though, they should do classic monsters. Oh, yeah. No, that would, that would be awesome, too. Any, I mean, Universal is so ripe with that. I don't want to see a Born Legacy race. I don't want to see the Born series. Does he run a lot? I think that's like 90% of the movie. <laughs> I think you're thinking of Mission Impossible 3. What about the uh, pitch perfect uh, running race? You just have to scream sing the whole time. Uh, I, I think we're on something with, with Bourne. There is a lot of running in that. But there is a lot of running in Mission Impossible 2. Yeah, but Maybe Tom Cruise, nobody it. makes running look as cool as Tom Cruise. Well, and because he's, he's so arms. close to the ground yeah. that it looks like he's going 30 times faster. <laughs> he's got those arms. And that being said, we both love the Mission oh, Impossible Oh, yeah, don't series. get me. They're some of my favorite movies. Yeah. Don't even. I, I've been I, I've been hesitating on thinking that Mission Impossible Three might be itching up there as one of my favorites in the series. That's I was re- I was a little mini tangent here. I read a thing the other day that was like, oh, when it came back from rescued from the third one, I'm like, rescued. Pardon you. It was the third one rescued it from the second one. Exactly. The only what I would say is the only subpar Mission Impossible in all of the series. The problem with the third one is the fact that no one wanted to watch it because the second one was so bad. And so for that right. reason, they felt like the fourth one did save the series. But if we would have just paid attention to J.J. Abrams way back when, then we would have been like, oh, the third one is actually really freaking awesome. Has some of the coolest segments. Oh, it's got great shots yeah. in it. Like, I I know this is a huge digression, but whatever. You know, he's on the bridge and he hits the window and then the car window breaks. I'm like, that's awesome. Yeah, it's at the end of the show anyways. At this point, it, they <laughs> already know. go to yeah, find gone. Links, they hung up uh, <laughs> comments, crap like that. You know, whatever. You're not listening to watching anyways anymore but uh i mean that being said i think it is probably time to wrap things up yeah someday someday we'll have that movie podcast yeah, uh it will be uh on dis pop later on you'll catch our <laughs> mission impossible our breakdown uh we're gonna do like that one uh podcast that takes one minute of star wars and just breaks that down over the course of an hour we're gonna do that with mission impossible oh my god i didn't Diz even pop. know that was a thing oh yeah no that's a that's a good deep Oof, dive wait till we get to the <laughs> red light green light red light green light <laughs> yeah it's just <laughs> we'll break it down by the second just so we just get rip. Just by every Jean Reno line in the entire movie. (laughs) (laughs) He is my favorite professional out there. (laughs) That was a little bit of a deep dive, too, there, but it's fine. I thought you were going to say cab driver in New York City, because when you're you're on the run from a giant lizard, you can always count on him to hotwire a cab with a knife. You know what, though? I did. I found him through Godzilla. I and now I guess I would have watched Mission, no, Mission Impossible. Impossible. First. Yeah, I found him through Mission Impossible. I fell in love with him through <laughs> Godzilla, but then I finally appreciated him as an artist because of the professional. See, I thought you were gonna do um, one of them hurt me, one of them loved me, <laughs> like you were doing the oh, Ariana Grande yeah. breakdown. Are, are we talking? One about, brought me uh, pain. One sleep, brought me patience. Sleep, Mary, kill. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, it definitely kill him in the Da Vinci Code, and I would sleep with him <laughs> in the Pink Panther. Oh, yes, I would. No, I would marry that one. That sense of humor. (laughs) And then, of course, uh, you know, I would sleep with him in in the professional. And the rest is just good rules. He's a a very great actor. Jean Reno. And now we'll do it for this episode. For this episode of the Jean Reno podcast. (laughs) And that's podcasting.
So for links to everything discussed in this episode, head over to disunplug.com, home of the show notes page for this show and all the others on the Disunplug Podcast Network. You can find links to our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, and our email address, uopodcast at disunplugged.com. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead, subscribe, hit that bell so you get notified when we have new videos, and uh, leave us comments down below. Leave us your questions for next week. See what it could happen just from one question. and uh, Tell us your favorite John Reno movie. Yeah. Be in, in the comments below. If it was a universal movie, great, we'll yep. tie it in. Even better. Well, we will find a way to tie it in and, of course, hit that thumbs up or thumbs down button. If you're listening to this uh, on iTunes, Stitcher, Google, however you're getting it. Uh, Spotify. Yeah, Spotify. Make sure you're subscribed to us and if you can leave us feedback anywhere, please do so. We appreciate it. So uh, thank you, everyone out there for listening and watching. Thank you, Rhino, for being a part of this. Uh, we'll see you again next week on the Jean Renel podcast. But until then, remember... Uh, we just changed the name. Yippee!